Hello everyone, I'm Pedro Li, and I will present our work Learning Skeletal Articulations with Neural Blend Shapes. This is a joint work with Pierre Aberman, Rana Hanoka, Li Bing Liu, Olga Sorkin Hornung, and Bao Chen Chen. So let's first start with the existing pipeline for character animation. To animate a character, the artist needs to manually create the underlying skeleton, known as rigging and binding between skeleton and the mesh, called skinning. After this tedious step, the artist can import a skeleton animation, which may be acquired from some motion capture system, and get the deformed output. However, there are three main challenges in the existing pipeline. First, the skeleton and skin weights are manually created by the artist it's a difficult skill that animators could spend years attempting to master. As shown in the screenshot, the artist needs to iterate on skin weights by observing the result on different poses and from different viewpoints. Second, when importing the skeletal animation, the existing mocap skeletal structure may not comply with the artist's created structure. In such a case, a cross-structure motion retargeting is needed and this problem has not been fully solved yet. Third, the existing deformation models like linear blend skin, of known as LBS, suffer from artifacts in joint region. These artifacts generally require a tailored and post-specific refinement. This refinement for smoke leap could take several hours for a skilled animator. In this work, we present a framework that makes the mocap to deformation process simple and efficient. Given a newly designed character with arbitrary mesh connectivity, our network generates a practical rig with the prescribed skeletal structure and the high quality skin weights, which are realized by the color. Our network also computes a set of residual and post pendant displacements that improve the deformation quality point neural blend shapes. These refinements are crucial to the high-quality deformation in joint regions. Recently, RigNet demonstrates impressive performance on shape with varying skeletal hierarchies like bipeds, quadrupeds. However, it offers very limited control over the output skeletal structure with only a scalar indicating the joint density. Pinocchio embeds an existing skeletal structure into a shape. Its skin weight generation is purely geometric rule-based and lack of empirical expertise from human. Since it does not provide post-specific refinement, this results in undesirable artifacts. Notice that this skinning technique and its variant are still part of the automatic skinning solution in these days. SMPL model introduces high quality deformation for fixed mesh connectivity. The corrective post pendant displacement, as shown in the third column, comes from the interpolation of several statistics learned blend shapes. However, in the context of rigging and skin, different characters almost always contain different connectivity. We introduce our deep learning framework to facilitate the process of mocap deformation and to produce high quality result. Before diving into detail, I want to provide some intuition of our approach. Our framework consists of two branches: the envelope deformation branch that predicts the rigging and skin character for the input character. This branch generates a skeleton with the skeletal structure retrieved from the mocap data and the residual deformation branch that works parallel with the envelope deformation branch. One of its network takes a geometry as input and generates several blend shapes. Another light network takes a joint rotation as input and produces n scalars that are used to interpolate among the generated blend shapes for producing residual vertex displacements. To get the final result, we add the residual displacement to the rest pose then fill it with the rigging and skinning generated in the envelope branch to the differential enveloping. Here, we choose linear blend skinning. Then we can get a deformed shape.
Here we summarize the architecture of our envelope branch. We build our network upon mesh convolution operator from mesh CNN. I will recap the details of this operator later, and let's focus on architecture for now. Our network generates a skinning weights with skinning block before the generation of skeleton. It is possible, since we have the skeletal structure embedded in the framework, so the skinning weights can be viewed as a fine grained segmentation task. And Mesh CNN is just good at doing it. After acquiring the skinning weight, we perform the skinning based pooling to transform the vertex space feature deep vertex into skeleton space feature deep offsets. The skinning weights characterize the connection between vertices and bones. So the skinning based pooling works just like an attention based pooling. And it's indeed a fancy way of saying matrix multiplication here. So the deep offsets, which is in skeletal space, is then fed into several skeleton work convolution layers. Briefly speaking, the skeleton work convolution convolves only on the neighbors of a given joint. We refer interesting audience to the original paper. Now with both rigging and skinning. Given the joint rotation and pass it through a forward max layer, we can use common LBS technique to generate a deformed shape. Now, let's discuss some technical detail. The mesh convolution operator we use is originally proposed in the work of mesh CNN. It is designed to work with on triangle meshes with arbitrary connectivity. It exploits the fact that each edge has four or two neighbors and defines convolution for edge feature with a neighbor relationship. However, our input and desired output is vertex feature. To address this issue, we employ a similar scheme to point to mesh to convert between vertex and edge feature. For the conversion of vertex to edge, we simply average the two endpoints features of a given edge. For the conversion of edge to vertex, we average the feature of all neighboring edge of a given vertex. Let's take a closer look to the skinning block. It takes vertex location as input and predicts the skinning weight. Obviously, predicting skinning weights require global awareness. And here, we indulge the network with global awareness in two ways. The first is rather trivial. We use the global location as input for the network. Although convolution only provides local awareness, the input feature provides global awareness. The second is inspired by the segmentation network in PointNet, whose task is actually similar to the skinning block. They propose to apply max pool to the deep feature and concatenate it with per vertex feature to produce segmentation result. Similarly, we apply max pool to one-fifth of the output channels along vertex axis after each convolutional layer, then repeat and concatenate it back to the remind features. The residual branch is similar to the envelope branch. They both contain skinning block and geometry block. Note that the skinning block is shared with envelope branch. As residual branch generates a set of residual blend shapes, that is used to improve deformation quality, which is a pervertence feature. We replace the skinning based pulling with a simple concatenation operation and fit the concatenated feature into several mesh convolutions instead of skeleton wear convolution. This constitutes the network for predicting the residual blend shape basis. We employ another lightweight MLP network to predict the coefficient that is used to interpolate among the blend shape bases. We carefully design the interpolation process. Let's dive deeper into it. So precisely speaking, the rotation of each joint is fed into its corresponding MLP, and each MLP is conditioned on only one joint rotation. Ideally, the blend shape's BI should be very sparse since the corrective displacements of different joints should be orthogonal. Thus, the number of BI should be proportional to the number of joints and could be more than 200 in our experiments. 
The output channel being large is a big challenge for the network, both training and inference time. To address this issue, we introduce a binary local mask MI for each joint, which can be calculated from setting a threshold for the skin weights. We simply perform an element-wise product to the corrective displacement. This step has two advantages. First, by exploiting a sparsity of corrective displacement, we can compress the number of blend shapes from proportional to the number of joints to a constant in our experiment from more than 200 to only 9. It also enforces the locality of corrective displacement. Even if we are learning from an overfitted model, the SMPO model, which we will see very soon. To intuitively understand the coefficient generated by MLPs, here we provide a visualization of the activation, which is visualized by the color of corresponding joints. It can be seen that when large deformation is applied to one joint, it has higher activation. So this is our overall framework, which is capable of producing high-quality deformation that are driven by mocap data. But how do we train it? Well, let me briefly remind you, our framework takes the character mesh as input, plus the input joint rotations, and produces the deformed result. Note that the whole procedure here is differentiable, and it enables us to train the network end-to-end. -end. Training our network is easy when you simply provide examples of paired input rotations and deform shape, and a single reconstructed loss LV is sufficient. With this indirect supervision manner, we do not need ground truth rigging, skinning, or blend shapes, meaning that we have no assumption on underlying deformation model for data set. This means that our framework is general and can be trained on different deformation models. To increase the train efficiency, we train the two branches in two stages. For more details, please refer to our paper. So, we need a data set that contains poles and mesh pairs. Luckily, the SMPO model gives a deformed shape for a given joint rotation, which just fits our need. It also accepts shape parameter that controls identity, which enlarges our training set with different body shapes and makes our system more robust. In training time, we randomly sample joint rotation R from two predefined rotation distributions. For envelope branch, we sample the rotation angle from a rather smaller range because it's enough to capture the articulation. For residual branch, we sample rotation angle from a different distribution to capture even larger exaggerated deformations. However, this is not enough for training a general model for many two reasons. The SMP model is of fixed connectivity and mesh convolution heavily relies on local connectivity. The fixed connectivity can lead to overfitting. And the second, the SMPO model only captures naked human model, which is only a small part of real-world models. The lack of variety in geometric features can also lead to overfitting. So we propose two data augmentation methods to deal with these two problems. To deal with connectivity, we apply three common topological operators on mesh, edge collapse, edge split, and edge flip to augment the dataset. It can be proved that the combination of these three operations can achieve arbitrary connectivity. It can be seen that with connectivity augmentation, the predicted skin weights realized as the color can stay robust to the change of connectivity. But without the connectivity augmentation, our network struggles to generate correct results for unseen connectivity. In multi-government net, the authors propose a dataset of 3D scanning dressed people. Although it does not contain rig, but the authors have them registered in SMPO connectivity, so we can make good use of it. We fit an SMPO model into the registered model, 
by applying an L2 loss on vertex location and optimize the joint rotations plus shape parameters. Then, we can unpose it with the help of joint rotation and deformation model provided by SMPL, and even put into any pose we want. This makes it qualified for being part of the training set. And this augmentation creates geometric variability in the training data. It can be seen that the garment augmentation helps our network to generalize to unseen character. Now, we have a fully understanding of the training process of the system. Let's enjoy some good results. For this character downloaded from Examo shipped with a rig, our model can modify the skeletal structure to comply the existing mocap structure with a single forward pass, plus accurate skin weights. Look at the subtle muscle volume here. This is just impressive. Our model can rig various characters. Here we show the generated skeleton and the visualization of skin weights on test examples from three datasets. SMPO model, multi garment network, and an artist's handcrafted character. Here we show our rigging and blend shapes in animation. Since our model is directly trained on high quality data, our model can outperform existing method with only the envelope branch. Our neural blend shapes can further refine the result. As mentioned before, our method can generate skeleton with desired hierarchy and with more accurate joint positioning. With the scalar control of RigNet, we are indeed able to change the density of generated skeleton, but cannot accurately specify the skeletal structure. The closest we can get is of 25 joints, where the target skeleton hierarchy contains 24 joints. Here, we compare our rigging with existing methods. It can be seen that our framework generates a desired structure and more accurate joint position. Here, we show the comparison on deformation and skin of our method to Blender, which is based on Pinocchio. It can be seen our method provides better results on the joint region and more accurate skin weights. So, I would like to wrap up this talk and to mention that we presented a new framework that simplifies the mocap to deformation process, where the deformation quality is greatly increased by the automatically generated blend shapes. Our framework is compatible with existing animation pipeline and reaches up to hundreds of frames per second on a modern GPU, thus is ready to plug and play in standard animation softwares as well as game engines. Note that our model needs to be retrained for a new skeletal structure. Thus, an interesting future direction could be enabling the network to support different skeletal structures with more flexibility. Our neural blend shapes demonstrate the ability to compensate LBS artifacts and capture muscle bulging effects. It could also be interesting to generate second order dynamics effects using the same technique. Okay, that's all for this talk. Hope you enjoy it and see you at the Q&A session. Bye bye.